Hey, you lovely people. So today we're going to be looking a little bit more in depth into Google Analytics. Now, I'm not going to call this a deep dive because I know only kind of what I need to know to get by in analytics. Some of these go straight over my head. Some of these you just don't need to, to have a look at. So if anybody has a little bit more experience specifically with how to work with Redbubble and analytics, feel free to comment below. Let us all know your tips and tricks. But for now, I'm going to show you what I use in analytics to track my Redbubble store. Now, certainly this is not somewhere I go every day. It's normally maybe once a week to just check how things are going. But for the most part, I just kind of leave it to tick over. I think a lot of these elements within Google Analytics are very helpful if you're running campaigns and promotions and you want to see how those have translated into either views or sales, then it's really, really valuable. But you guys know me, I don't do promoting. That renders a lot of the features within Analytics a bit useless. So basically, I just use it to gather data on my users, what they're looking at, how long they're staying on my shop and how many of those users are actually translating into sales for me. So let me take you through each of these reports. Some of them I will brush over very quickly because they're either just not relevant to us or I don't use them and I don't understand them and I'm sure as hell not gonna try and explain them to you if I don't understand them. So let's start with users. So this tracks users that either enter your shop or click open one of your designs that are linked to your shop. So it's a good way to see how many views and eyes you're getting on your designs. So I wanna preface my situation with you guys. If I go down here, if we look at our users panel, we can see that my users for the last seven days have gone down 10%. Now, I've been on quite a high with two designs on Redbubble from I'd say the end of May to pretty much now that have been trending and I've made crazy, crazy sales on these designs, but I'm kind of at the back end that they're slowing down a lot. Everything seems to be coming back to normal now. So, so my figures are all coming back down to reality, but it's, it's a good bit of data to have a look at, to see how these trends happen. Now, when you look at your user's graph, you have two lines here. So the dark blue solid line is your current week. And your dotted line is the week before. So if I have it set to seven days, which I have, it's going to give me this week versus last week. So at a very quick glance, I can see the differences between this week and last week. Now, let's go to the last 28 days. And you can see, so this would be August versus the same time in July. So you can see August, even though I still made really good sales on, on these designs, things were coming down from a crazy July. So my users reflected the sales that I made at that time. Uh, if we look at the last 90 days, so it's always interesting to see where you are week to week, month to month, and even quarter to quarter. Okay, and obviously this is pretty obvious. It tells me how many users are actually on my Redbubble shop at the moment. So acquisition is, is really interesting. The only downside to it is one of the main metrics is a bit useless to us. So it's always important to understand what you're looking at when you're looking at these different metrics here. So we've got direct, paid search, organic search, email, and other. So direct is basically when, when Google Analytics can't determine where that traffic is coming from or where that information is being gathered from, it will just lump it into the direct category. So because we don't have complete control over Redbubble because it's not our site, Google Analytics have a limited view. They just have our shop view. So a lot of the, the information is not clear to them as to how this traffic is reaching your shop. So they lump it into this direct category. I believe it's very likely someone is on Redbubble, they've searched a term and they found your design because no other metric measures that. So that, that would be my educated guess as to direct traffic. 
paid search, that is a user clicking on an advert in Google or another search engine. Organic search, they found your design via a search engine, but it's not an advert. Email, they've clicked on your design through a, probably a marketing email that Redbubble sent out. And to see what other is covering, I would have to go into each individual day and click into the data to check. Um, but you can drill down and see what this other metric covers. So if I change the tab to source medium, so I have this set to the last seven days by default. So each of these is one day of the week. So we start with Friday the 28th of August and we end with yesterday, Thursday the 3rd of September. So I can, if I hover over this, I can see I had 65 users that were direct or none. Remember that I'm assuming that that means they're on Redbubble, they've searched and they found your design and clicked on it. So on two occasions, last Friday, we had Google CPC, which means a user was searching in Google, found an advert for one of my designs, clicked on it. Google Organic, they've searched on Google, they've clicked on one of my designs, but it wasn't an advert, it was just a normal search listing. RB Email, they probably got a Redbubble marketing email and they clicked on it. And other, if I go into that particular day, I can see what that other category entailed. So that's the same, you can have a look at each day of the week of the last seven days. So if you're running a promotion, say on Instagram or Facebook, you'd be able to see how many clicks you got from that advert that translated into someone viewing your design on Redbubble. So how you acquire users, really, really, really useful if you are doing promotions. Again, I'm not. If I, if I suddenly have a very big spike in sales on a certain design and I come in here and I can see RB slash email is really, really high. I know that Redbubble are obviously promoting that design of mine. And as a result, people are clicking on it and coming into my store. So it's a good indication of where things are going and how Redbubble might be marketing your designs. So that is acquisition. Very interesting to have a look at from time to time. Uh, countries, I guess this is important if you're targeting certain countries, say you do text designs that are in a certain language and you want to hit those countries that speak that language, then that might be interesting. But for now, it's just, for me, it's just interesting to take a look at, at where my, most of my users are coming from. Time of the day, of course, that's, that's good if you, if you plan to run a campaign or a promotion and you can see when you're getting most of your users, when you can attract them to your store what people are using to actually browse your shop. Mine seems to be pretty half and half for the most part, desktop and mobile. User retention, I don't really look at that at all. I'm sure it's helpful. Um, I haven't found any use in it myself. Active users, now this is pretty much the same information that you get from your users report. I can't tell the difference between these two reports. I'm sure there is. Obviously, again, useful if you're running promotions. If you ran, say, a seven-day campaign on Facebook and you want to compare that week to the previous week where you didn't run your campaign to compare numbers and clicks, that would be very, very useful. So insights is really interesting. I don't really touch it too much, but it helps you understand and compare one metric against another. So, for example, they've got these three up. What campaigns have the most sessions? Show me a trend of my bounce rate over the last three months. What's my average page load time? Some of them will be absolutely useless to you, um, but you can generally go in and drill down in each of these sections and find random questions and run reports over those to compare one piece of data against another. Set goals, all that kind of stuff. You can really get down to the nitty gritty on analytics. I don't do that. I don't have any reason to do that, but I do find some general stuff very, very useful. So if we look at my last 90 days, I've had 7.3 thousand people viewing my work. How many of those views have actually translated into sales? Let's take a look. So like I said before, I have a couple of trending designs going on. So 
I have a lot of data, a lot of users to work with. So this might be the most interesting time to do this, but I'm sure if you did this yourself, you would find a similar pattern. So let me just go into the full report for this. So as you guys know, on the 15th of every month, Redbubble begin processing our payments. And depending on how you get paid, whether it's through PayPal or a bank account, depends on the speed of that payment, but that's not my point. We know on the 15th, we pretty much know when we get our remittance notice from Redbubble, how much we're going to get for that month. And that payment is based on any sales that were made between the 15th of July to the 15th of August. Obviously, we won't get paid for the sales that haven't gone into manufacturing yet. So you might be asking, Martin, why are you telling me this? I know this already. I just wanted to explain my reasoning as to why we're going to be looking at these certain metrics and the dates. So what I want to do is I want to gather the information on my users between the 15th of July to the 15th of August. I want to have a look at how many sales I had on the 15th of July to the 15th of August and the percentage of the views that converted into sales as well as the monetary value of those sales. And we're going to have a look at three months worth of that information and you'll see a certain pattern. It's very interesting. It'll be interesting to see if you guys see the same results on your Redbubble stores. So let me show you what I mean. I'm in my users report, so my audience overview. So the first thing I want to do is I want to change the dates of the data from the 15th of July to the 15th of August and hit apply. So straight away I can see my users for this month were 3,756. Now I want to have a look at the data from the 15th of June to the 15th of July. So here we have 2,288 users. And finally, I want to have a look at the 15th of May to the 15th of June. Apply. So for this period, I had 890 users. Okay, so I've made a note of all that information. Now we're going to come out. We're going to go back home. And I want to go into my pages report. Now you'll notice on your pages report, you have all these different designs people have been looking at, but you also have this tab called checkout slash success. That means exactly what you think. Someone has actually gone to the checkout and paid for one of your designs. So we're going to use that as our amount of sales in this instance. So let's do the same dates as we did before. We're going to look at 15th of July to the 15th of August, apply. So in that period of time, we had 347 sales. So I'll make a note of that. Next, let's have a look at 15th of June to the 15th of July, apply. For this period, we had 234. And finally, we'll have a look at the 15th of May to the 15th of June and apply. And for this period, we had 83 sales. So that's pretty interesting, isn't it? So let's take a look at this. 15th of July to the 15th of August, we had 3,756 views, and that translated into 347 sales. The 15th of June to the 15th of July, we had 2,288, and that translated to 234 sales. 15th of May to the 15th of June, we had 890 views and that translated into 83 sales. So we see a very clear pattern here. Well, at least I do in my data that around 10% of my views are actually translating into sales. So have a look at your data, compare these two metrics and it'd be interesting to see if yours is either higher or lower because ultimately the ultimate goal for us is to have every single view convert into a sale. That's not always going to happen. That, that's probably not very realistic at all. But really, we want to grab the right people to look at our stuff and get them to buy it. That's the ultimate goal. So I'm really interested in your guys' uh, percentage on that. But I've got a sneaky feeling if I keep looking at each month going back, I'm probably going to find that, that that percentage doesn't really change very much. 
And obviously, if, you, if you're getting, say, 100 views a month, but none of those are translating to sales, then at least you can put a plan in place to get those, at least 10 of those 100 views translating into sales. You need to have a look at your stuff, see what you might be doing wrong. You're obviously doing something right because you're getting views, but you're not getting the sales. And on the flip side of that, if you're getting 100 views a month and you're making 50 sales, that is a really, really good ratio of sales conversions from views. So give yourself a massive pat on the back for that. But have a look. I encourage you to have a look to see where you are. In case you're you're interested in the amounts of money that I made from Redbubble connected to those sales, I've popped those up on the screen now. This is not normal, guys. I'd say a normal amount for me is 80 to 200. That can fluctuate. It can certainly go high. It can certainly go lower, especially in the beginning of the year. I was getting kind of 50 and 60 pounds a month, uh, which was uh, a lot less than I was used to. But then I had these trending designs, so everything went the other way. But I know this is not the norm. I certainly don't expect this amount of money to continue. So I'm always working on new designs and getting uh, new stuff out there in the hope that I can continue growing my store, getting more people on, because now I know that at least 10% of my views are going to translate into sales. So the more views I can get on my stuff, the better. So that's pretty much all I have to say about analytics. I hope you guys find that helpful. Like I said, comment below. Let me know how many of your views are translating into sales. I'm really, really curious. And if you have any tips for me on how to work in analytics, even better, let me know. In the meantime, take care, everyone, and I'll see you soon.